about our brain. If you ever feel like your mind is playing tricks on you, well, according to our next guest, it is. On his hit show, he uses games to show us the science behind how our brains really work. Check him out. Do you want some free money? It's really free. It's free money. Are you serious? I mean, this is all about trust, so you have to trust me. Are you serious? Yeah. This is about trust. I'm smiling. Is something gonna attack me or like what? I promise there's no strings attached. Pinky promise? I pinky promise there's no strings attached. It's just free money. It's just free money. I swear. It's free? Even when people took the money, they were sure it was a trick. That's right. And you would think that people would take the free money right away. But the fact that I was in the booth made people suspicious. Like, who is this guy giving me free money? And what do you want from me? Because it can't be. Exactly. So then what we did afterwards is we took me out of the booth. So then it was an empty booth that said free money. And when it was completely empty, many more people came and actually took the money. But here's (laughs) where it gets really interesting. Then we set up a pair of eyes. Not a person, just a poster with eyeballs staring you down, right? And of course, that was enough to scare everybody away from taking the money. Now, what's really interesting is why, right? I mean, a fake pair of eyes still says free money, and it's because our brains evolved to avoid public scrutiny in social groups. We want to avoid, you know, getting yelled at by the people that are in charge and so on and so forth. So the pair of eyes makes us feel watched, and it's enough to scare us from taking what otherwise is saying, here's the free money. So we're all thieves at heart. It's just because we're watching each other that we don't steal each other's eyes. Yeah, exactly. We keep ourselves in check. But, um, but no, really, that's what the show is, is we set up these interactive experiments, these games, these brain hacks to reveal shortcomings in your perception of reality. And, and how the brain actually works. 100%. And you learn by doing because it's participatory. So in addition to doing the games on people like this, we also adapt them visually. So you at home can play along and participate and learn by doing. The it's way fun. Your inner it's a lot of fun. It's fun. It's so, probably really good for your brain. I'm going to play a game with you right now, okay. actually, if that's okay. Sure. So what I want you to do is I want you to say the word silk three times and then spell Silk, 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 S-I-L-K. Quickly, what do cows drink? Milk. (laughs) Okay. So that right there, I'll tell you how this brain game works. Cows don't drink milk. They maybe secrete milk. Oh, sure. Now, don't they drink milk when they're little cows? Uh, Maybe. But here's why that's interesting, right? Your brain loves patterns. It loves filling in the blanks. And it's very easy to very quickly complete patterns because in a way it's more efficient than actually paying all attention, giving all of our cognitive load to what's right. being asked of us, right? So in this context, we're priming you by saying, say, silk, 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 spell it out, S-I-L-K, it rhymes with milk. Then very quickly, I'm like, quick, what do cows drink? And of course, you no. cows. Yeah, exactly. You make the association, you make the link, you fill in the blanks incorrectly and give the wrong answer. Damn, I should have said dry martini. <laughs> Again, it's always about the fun games that have these profound takeaways about how we construct reality, which is really this what, the, what our brain does. It's fascinating, but it really is fun. Oh, too. yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So we have another one. Okay. Yeah, so um, here's what, and you guys can play along, too. This has to do with the, with the uh, brain-body, the brain-mind connection, right? So your brain telling your body to do stuff and whether or not it's in sync. So follow my instruction. Put your, uh, your index finger out like this, and then you're going to make your thumb like that, Okay. Now, what I want you to do, and this sounds really easy, but I want to see if you can do it really fast, is exactly flip them so that you raise this thumb and you put that finger out. (laughs) And try to do it a lot of times really fast, right? That's really hard. So, try to do it, yeah. Oh my god, I feel like Elaine dancing in Seinfeld, right? This is Elaine's dance if I can. There you go. I'm not doing any more of that on the show. (laughs) And the thing is... It's so hard. Exactly. Why is that so hard? Well, you can learn how to do it, but the thing is, different hemispheres of the brain are being engaged. And so you actually, in order to tell your right hand to do something specific, one part of the hemisphere, one hemisphere has to stop and tell that part of the brain, to, that hand to do something. And then the other part of the brain has to then afterwards tell the other hand to do something. And so it's, it's such an intense cognitive load that it's hard. Without practicing this oh, yeah. move, would someone who's used to doing um, two different things with each of their hands, like a drummer, or a piano player, yeah. would they innately... Well, they, be, 
this can be learned, like riding a bicycle yeah, in a bit. they have an easier time with it than someone who doesn't they do might. two different things. They might. They might have more developed already dexterity and right. hemispheres have already learned, something like that. But in any case, anybody could learn it. But the fact that it's so difficult, even though it sounds so simple, is an example, again, of the connection between brain and body and the sort of different hemispheres. It's crazy. Work. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, you guys, our in-studio audience already participated in another brain game but you're unaware of it so far. Yes. These are two members of our staff, Wes and Mark. Yeah, now these Why are two different guys. Why don't you explain guys? what okay. happened? So these are two different guys, right? Clearly, one wears glasses. They really, they look a little bit alike in that they have blue eyes, but that's there about it. There you go. You have both of them fine, handsome gentlemen. So here's the thing. Do you think you can tell the difference between these two guys if you saw them? You think you could, right? Let's play the tape and see. Hello, how are you? Good. Welcome to the Rachel Ray Show. So we have our standard audience release. Just glance it over. It's pretty standard. And okay. then you're going to sign down at the bottom. Okay. Um, let me get you a pen. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Welcome to the show. Um, just look over this release, and then we're going to have you sign at the bottom. Um, sorry, let me get you a pen. <laughs> Yeah. 